Welcome back, knuckleheads. I am Lupine Fiasco. This is Daily Fab Gameplay. Today we are playing KO vs. Vincent. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago after enough time has passed that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will talk through turn cycles as if I were taking them now and compare that to what I did then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events like the upcoming ProQuest and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you would like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link in the video description below. While you're down there, if you have not already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video. You'll get bonus DFG content every week. And there are even more benefits to come. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Let's talk about our sideboard and our Vincent game plan. Vincent is not a deck that I expect to run into very often, but I have been seeing it get some popularity on Talishar, and I think the deck might be very close to being good. Uh, it feels like Vincent is one or two pieces away from being a real threat, and when you put her into a position where she can either set up, or especially as KO, if you are giving her quicken with swing big, she can be very, very strong. So it's good to get some reps against her. I am still figuring out the counter Vincent strategy. Uh, I like bringing in AB1. I think that's very good. Being able to stop some of her on hits, potentially quote unquote on hits, um, or at least forcing her to take some damage to ensure that her widespread Deathly Whale, Deathly Delight effects trigger can be very good. Having the ability to convert extra blues into uh, life if you are preventing arcane damage can be very strong. That said, Vincent is not Viscerai. Usually if she is dealing arcane damage, she is also presenting you with the opportunity to block so having the extra blues is not uh, an extra a way to convert your extra blues into defensive value is not necessarily uh, as important as it is against a viscerai. But as we'll see in this game, the ability to stop arcane damage towards the end of a game that she might be making off of grasp of the arc knight is very very strong. So AB one in. Uh, Skullhorn, we are going to leave that out. Scaling Fleshbag is still very strong, considering that Vincent is sending physical damage. And we're thinking this game can go a little long, so we are going to keep our Spring Tunic. Uh, you know, if you've been watching my KO videos, I'm generally a fan of Spring Tunic. In my most recent iteration of the deck, I've cut Crosstrap entirely. I'm just a Tunic believer. As far as the deck itself, we are really on an aggro package here. This is an older version of the list, so we are uh, still playing Red Assault and Batteries that are staying in the sideboard. At least from our current version of the list, uh, we are leaving our Humbles in the sideboard. Vincent's Hero Power is usually detrimental to her, losing that fourth card in hand. Making the Rune Chant is good, but humbling Vincent is very often not something we want to be doing. But for this build, for the build that I'm on now, we don't need our kind of grindier matchup options. So Savage Beatdown, or as I'm on Massacre, stay in the board. Uh, the defensive option of always is Respite, stay in the board. We are just presenting a clean 60 that we are hoping is going to be enough to kill her, or at least pressure her off of her bigger turns and just get a win. So we will submit the deck, see what happens, jump into it. 
having lost the die roll, we are going second. If we're going to win the die roll, we want to go first to prevent Vincent from getting rune chance on her first turn. With this hand in particular, going first would have been great because we could discard a windup and play a cast bounce. As it is, we are hoping that we will be able to keep this windup to discard. Then, uh, well, we'll see. Having three reds, two of which uh, force us to discard at random, is a pretty inauspicious start with this cast bones in hand. Vincette chooses not to use her priority that we just gave her with uh, our discard. She takes one point from Arcane uh, from Blood Debt and puts a Deathly Delight into Banish. So we have an interesting choice to make because we want to play this Cast Bones, but our Savage Feast and our Wild Ride both force us to discard at random. So we can either take a more aggressive line, which would be to play Wild Ride, pitching Cast Bones, and Smash Instinct, then either following that up with a Claw or whatever we keep from the draw discard. If it is Savage Feast, we Claw and Arsenal the Feast. If it is something else, maybe we play that. The other line we could take would be much less damage, but much more setup, which would be attack with Claw, uh, over pitch with Wild Ride and Smash Instinct, then play Cast Bones. In theory, both of these uh, turn cycles are dealing the same amount of damage. The Wild Ride Claw line is 9 with an Arsenal. The Claw Cast Bones line is 9 value with an Arsenal. Um, I do think that pressuring Vincent is probably the better line that more or less taking an intellect penalty on our turn with the cast bones is probably not ideal. The third line we have available that I actually would take in this case if I'm making this decision now is to play Wild Ride by pitching uh, Smash Instinct and having a 33% chance of... Uh, keeping this cast bones and then playing the cast bones I think would be really good. We already have the agility, so even if we discard our cast bones, our wild ride has go again. We'll have a floating resource that we can either play Savage Feast, then get a card for our arsenal, or we could just claw. So actually, if I'm making this decision now, I'm just playing wild ride and taking the chance that we get really good cast bones value. I take what I think is the worst of the three lines. We are going to play this Cast Bones. Uh, we do hit, so Savage Feast from Arsenal with plus six power and agility is going to be really strong. Unfortunately, we don't draw our Beast Within. Uh, so we know that we have a Beast Within and a Swing Big towards the top of our deck. We are going to need to interact with the Vantam Wraith. We don't want uh, Vincent to make three rune chants uh, when this Wraith hits. We do need to keep a blue in our hand. Um, so how do we want to block this? We don't have our Bone Breaker, unfortunately. So very likely we do just need to uh, block with these two Reincarnates. Our turn is going to be play Savage Feast by pitching a Pulping, discard a Pulping. If we draw a Swing Big, it goes in the Arsenal. If we draw a Beast Within, we pitch it for Claw. So unfortunate that uh, oh, this is a line two. We're playing around Vincent having Pummel. We're covering the damage and we're also keeping a blue in hand so that we do have a follow-up to uh, Savage Feast. So I don't hate that line. I think that is... Uh, it's unfortunate losing Fleshbag this early in the game, but it does mean that we have a pretty solid uh, turn on our hands. Savage Feast for 12 with Go again. The follow-up here is going to be Pulping, uh, hoping to discard this beast within. Uh, we don't, unfortunately, so losing out on our Swing Big 
uh, we are just going to pitch the beast within to Mandible Claw. That flesh bag netting us a, uh, a pretty good turn. Pretty good turn getting to keep that blue. The hand that we draw into here is not great, unfortunately. Uh, so we are looking at a Deathly Delight that if it hits would make two rune champs. The turn that we have lined up is not great. Um, we are going to take these two rune champs. And as far as the Deathly Delight with its on hit, I am a fan of blocking. Unfortunately, blocking with Swing Big and CNC. I want to prevent Vincent from making those two rune champs. On our turn, we will just pitch Send Pack into Claw for four and Arsenal this Blood Rush Bellow. Flail coming in for one. We are just going to block. That's fine. We keep Vincent off of making a rune chant. She will get one from Funeral Moon. And we are just going to claw for four. Already finding ourselves with zero armor means that we are going to have to block more aggressively from hand to stop the Mavarian Skies that Vincent continues to draw. But we are setting up for a very good uh, Blood Rush Bella. And set with Sonata Galaxia, which is uh, a real card that really exists. Finding a Blessing of the Cult to make three rune chants. We are just going to uh, take this damage. Because we have such a strong turn lined up with multiple pull things in a Blood Rush Bellow in Arsenal. So taking quite a bit of damage, Vincent is going to be really set up to have a strong turn, but we've got a strong turn cooking of our own. Playing Pulping, we have a few options of how we want to play out this turn. Um, we could discard our windup to make agility, still having our three resources from Smash Instinct and the Tunic to Claw CNC. But considering that we are in a Blood Rush, considering that Vincent does not have an arsenal for us to threaten, I like maximizing our damage on the Blood Rush turn. So for me, I am following this pulping with Mandible Claw for five then using Tunic and CNC to play Agile Windup for eight. That is what I decided to do in the past. The agility could have been good. We would miss out on two damage this turn um, in order to have that agility. The agility could be very strong depending on what our next four cards look like. Um, though with these, very likely not mattering. Here, another Sonata Galaxia to find another Blessing of the Cult, then set with another Mavrian Skies. And we are looking at a Deathly Delight for uh, five with five rune chance tied to it. The hand that we are throwing away to prevent some of this damage, I think I'm okay with. If one of these blues was a red, I would be more interested in keeping the hand because I know that I have the potential for a Pulping Claw finisher line. At the same time, if we use some Arcane Barrier here, then we are resistant to a defense reaction from Arsenal. Um, so if I'm making this call, we are already committed to AB3, which I think is very good. Uh, after that, the question is, what do I want to do on my turn? We could 
prevent all of this damage. I could AB, finish my AB3, I could AB2 by pitching pulping, then I could put my two blues in front of the Deathly Delight. We stay at 27 and we sort of give and set a lot of agency with a five card hand. If we choose to keep something to have a turn, then we are signing up to take five more damage. Um, very likely pitching is pulping to finish out the arcane barrier. Then on our turn, we play a pack call, pitch an agile wind up. Maybe we claw for four and discard wind up to make my agility. That would be the line. I think that's probably what I should do. Uh, just throw four damage and set up my agility for my next turn. So if I'm making that call now, that is what I'm gonna do. I will finish my AB3. I'll then pitch pulping to AB2. And uh, this feels like the worst line. Um, Vincent also makes a rune chant based on this. That's fine though, but uh, sending pulping for six is higher damage then claw for four okay interesting i guess this all turned out to be the same just triggers my brain that i had a floating resource when i didn't need one the hand we draw into is great um we are going to see if we can just tank some damage here uh this is going to be eight arcane plus uh, three physical, taking us to 11. Vincent will make three more rune chants. Really just atrocious timing on these Marverian skies. Um, if we really wanted to use this agility, we would need to keep four cards. We would pitch a blue, play our bear fangs, hope that we discard a blue and draw a red, then claw red. Uh, if we were going to prevent a lot of this damage, we would give two blues to do so, giving one blue to arcane and one blue to physical defense. Um, I think that's fine. I think we do have a bit of inevitability with Vincent having this carrion husk. Um, the Deadly Whale is four. Let's give up Tunic here. We can't have Vincent making three rune chants. It's going to be really bad for us. Um, so I think blocking with the blue and the Tunic as much as it hurts is going to be okay. Um, I like that more than if we had kept this Assault and Battery and just blocked for six. Um, Vincent drawing very hot, just making a lot of rune chants, but we are at least going to get to throw some damage at her. Bearfangs drawing, discarding the Blood Rush Bellow is horrendous for us. I throw the good game out of frustration. Um, I have a long history of drawing and discarding Blood Rush Bellow with my Bearfangs, and that that is brute be like that sometimes. Drawing into another Blood Rush Vincent, drawing into another Mavrian Skies. This is fine. We are just going to. Oh, I feel like maybe we should have done some blocking there. I could have seen a world where we AB3, then block this for six. I think that we are probably getting a little uh, too aggressive. Maybe discarding that Blood Rush Bellow put me on tilt, but I think that AB3 block six Arsenal Blood Rush sounds like a much better plan. Just taking a bunch of damage. We have the potential to throw a lot of damage back at Vincent. She is at an effective 11 health, taking one point every turn from the Carrion Husk. If we uh, play Blood Rush, pitch the blue, discard Send Packing, there is a very strong chance that we just send 15 damage between Claw and Swing Big and get a card in the Arsenal. But going down to six, Vincent making three Rune Chants and still having two cards seems like not something that I want to have happen to me. So I think this was probably me on tilt. If I'm making this call now, 
I am AB3-ing some of those rune chants, and then I'm blocking the Deathly Whale with Send Pack and Swing Big. Then set following up with nine more damage, really strong. We are going to need to block this, of course. Um, just going to effectively get the same line. Um, we just took three extra damage that we didn't need to take. So we are in a position where we kind of need Vincent to just stop, leave us alone. Uh, here, very strongly agree with taking that damage. We will block this for six with a Savage Feast and an E-Strike. We're hoping that Vincent doesn't have a strong follow-up here um, as we really... We are already taking kind of a risk on Blood Rush because we are going to take at least one point of damage from Beast Within, but uh, it, we need to do it. We don't have a choice. So if we reveal a non-attack off the top of our deck, we die. Fortunately, we don't. Uh, the turn that we have lined up Still pretty good. Uh, claw for five, go again. Bear Fangs for hopefully 10 is gonna put Vincent into a position where she is gonna need to block. Um, we are needing to give at least one card every turn to stop the win chance. Now the question is, is Vincent going to attack with the flail? She is still taking a point of damage every turn from the Carrion Usk. So we do have her on a clock. Uh, the question is, is she going to accelerate that clock by dealing herself additional damage with Flail? And at least for now, the answer may be yes. Putting this Reincarnate into Arsenal feels really bad, but unfortunately we don't have much of a choice. Here Vincent is going to accelerate her clock and take two cards away from us. These cast bones, while a little late as far as winning the game, are going to put us closer to a victory by just being arcane barrier and block value. Our turn is going to be send packing for seven, which very likely does not kill Vincent. Uh, she can stay alive by blocking, but we are at least putting her closer to death and still, I don't know if tempting is the right word, but putting her into a position where she can flail us and accelerate her own clock. That's all we're trying to do right now is run out Vincent's clock. If nothing changes, she's dead in three turns. And because we are putting her now in a position where she needs to give us cards, the potential for her to do something like Mavreen's Sky's attack action or banish read the runes is really low. So again, we are going to pitch to Arcane Barrier. We're going to put a card in front of Flail of Agony. Uh, so very likely what we are going to do is pitch Wild Ride to Arcane. We will block the Flail with a Wrecker Romp. And on our turn, we're going to send E Strike for seven. The only reason I don't want to attack with Wild Ride is I believe there is still a Beast Within in my deck. If I draw a discard it, I lose the game. So at this point, we just need to live for one more turn. So we're trying to pressure cards out of Vincent's hand so that she can't put some big heinous thing together. She's going to have to give us one more card. She would have... Uh, probably just passed the turn because flail will kill her and then she dies to husk so we do manage to sustain we win based on vincent's only means of killing us being arcane bear uh being rune chant flail um but of course the flail does slowly kill her so we managed to get there after what i think with some really sloppy play, especially taking three more damage from a Mavreen's guy's red connecting that didn't need to happen because I really just think I was on tilt uh, after discarding that Blood Rush Bellow. 
but that is the brute life. And at least for me, if I can't take that, that uh, variance, I gotta get out of the class. But I love brute a lot, so I'm not gonna do it. I hope you love brute a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If so, assault and batter that like button. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback. Again, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It's free, it helps me out. But no matter what you do, catch me back here tomorrow for more daily fab gameplay. And until then, take care.